Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 and University of Pennsylvania. We're going to talk about um, grouper training, the admin track, uh, the grouper loader part one. We'll introduce the grouper loader, talk about how to configure it, we'll run the loader, types of ad hoc jobs, um, a simple SQL job, tables versus views, SQL groups of groups, and extra SQL features. So the loader um, runs as um, part of the API and it will on a scheduled basis query systems of record from either SQL or LDAP so it could go back to your identity management and get um, groups or lists of groups um, that will keep in sync in, in the grouper database. So basically the grouper loader just pulls the SQL sources or the LDAP sources and um, uh, updates memberships of, of groups. Um, so the grouper loader.properties contains the SQL and LDAP uh, connection information. Um, you can automatically add attributes on startup, which you probably want to do so that everything is ready to be used, and other non loader daemon information, XMPP, changelog consumers, and uh, daily report. So, you, so this is where you would set the auto add to true so that on startup things will be started. Um, your various database connections will be in this section. Uh, LDAP connections will be here. And um, other scheduled tasks, daemon tasks like the daily report, change log consumers, etc. To run the loader, uh, from the command line you can run gsh-loader. Um, or if you want to run one uh, loader job, you can log into GSH, declare a, a root session, find the group that has the configuration for the loader job, and call loader run one job loader group. So the basic um, loader job will query SQL or LDAP on a cron basis, and it'll make one system of record group so that um, if you make changes to this group, they'll be overwritten the next time the cron runs, and any changes over here will be provisioned in a grouper um, when the cron runs. If you want to have the ability to have includes on top of the system of record group, in other words, to be able to, in other words, to be able to add people to the overall group, then you have the group loader sync a system of record group. You create another companion group. Um, the uh, naming convention is that this one's underscore system of record and this one's underscore includes. And you can allow, assign privileges to administrators to be able to add members to this. And then you have an overall group which has each of these groups as a member so that effectively all the members of this group and the members of this group will be in the overall group and that's what the application would use to um, see who's in the group. You can take that one step further with um, includes and excludes. Again, the grouper loader um, maintains a system of record group. You have an includes group. You have the system of record uh, and the includes group as members on this one. Then you have another excludes group that you can um, grant administrators to be able to add members to. And the overall group would be a composite minus of the system of record and includes minus the excludes, and you get the overall group. So note that um, there is extra overhead in having a composite minus um, group and grouper. And um, in order to do this, you set the group type in the loader config to add include exclude to automatically configure this. So we'll do a simple SQL job. And the database config is um, you can either use the grouper registry database and login or you can use another database. And basically, um, the connection name is grouper if it's the grouper one, and um, it'll get it from grouper.hibernate.properties, otherwise from the loader. And any J JDBC database can be used. For um, SQL loader jobs, it might be preferable to keep the query in a view and then select from the view in the loader config, and then you can change that view when editing the query without having to change the configuration um, for the loader job. And you might have to restart the loader process to do that. Simple SQL job queries SQL or LDAP to the loader for a um, 
system of record group. Um, and the SQL or LDAP is going to return one list of members by subject ID, which will give you the best performance, or subject identifier, which is um, not as good a performance because it has to resolve all those subjects. And then the source ID, which will also um, give you a performance boost if you can return that too, so it doesn't have to go to each source uh, for each member of the group. So we need to configure the database in the grouper-loader.properties if it's not already there and it's not the registry database. And we do this by um, copying this section, db dot, and then the name of the uh, database connection, and then user pass and URL. And this, in this case, it's called my source. Up here, it's called warehouse. Um, so whatever ID you give it in this config is what you're going to refer to it in the configuration for the group. So make a view in the database, which returns the subject ID and subject source ID of the users in the group. In this case, we have a view called loader simple 1v, and we can select subject ID and subject source ID from it, and it returns a list of subjects and source IDs. And um, these subjects have to be resolvable from grouper, and these columns have to be subject underscore ID and subject underscore source underscore ID for grouper loader to find the, that data from the query. So then we're going to make a group in grouper and assign these attributes to it. Okay, before we um, create the group, we're just going to go to the diagnostics URL from the web services, and it's going to tell me that all of our daemons are running okay, we have a success all around, and um, besides these loader jobs, which are just daemon jobs, there are no um, loader jobs. So now I am going to create a group. We can call it employee. And we can assign type grouper loader. Now we can um, assign attributes to the loader. And basically, the DB name is going to be the my source from the grouper loader config. The cron is going to run um, at the top of every minute. The query is going to be select subject ID, subject source ID from loader simple 1v. The schedule type is going to be cron. The grouper loader type is going to be SQL simple. And now if I run the loader, gsh-loader, and I wait until the top of the minute, then I can look in the database and I can see the grouper loader log, sort by started time, and there was a uh, community employee job that ran. Sort by started time descending, and there was a community employee job that ran, and it took two seconds, and um, there were three inserts, no updates, no deletes. Total count is three. And now if I go back to the group, I can manage members, and I'll see that those three members are now there. And I can also see in the web services uh, I don't see it in the web services yet um, because that was cached, but let me bounce the web services and refresh. And now I see that the uh, diagnostics is monitoring this group, and it's found a success um, within a certain amount of time. Uh, in this case, we give it a long time, um, but you can configure that. So now we see that the members are there, and we can change memberships in the DB and UI and run the job or wait for it to run and see the results. So in 40 seconds. Let's delete number 8 from the UI. And in the database, 
we will um, delete 9. We'll add test subject 4. And now in 10 seconds when it runs, we'll see what happens. So now it ran, and we can check the gripper loader logs to see that it ran in the database. We'll sort by started time descending. And we see the employee group, 251 milliseconds. It had two inserts, one delete. There are two inserts because it had to reinsert the one that was deleted from the UI, um, and then the new member, and so everything will be in sync. Now we'll do a loader job that um, manages a set of groups with one query. You can do this with SQL or LDAP, and basically that query will contain not only the list of users, but also the group name for each user. Um, the loader will create folders if they don't exist and delete orphan groups um, uh, not, in the, not return from the query anymore if configured to do so. Um, so basically we're going to have a view now that returns group name, subject ID, and subject source ID and all the subjects must be resolvable by grouper. So let's create that group in the database. So I created the uh, table, not group, um, in the database and I ran the insert statements that are in the description or the comments field of the um, presentation. And now if I select group name, subject ID, subject source ID from loader courses view, um, I get back the group name, subject ID, subject source ID, And now I can go to the UI and create a group that's not in the provision folder. Um, so if this is an orgs list of org groups, it's not going to be in that folder. And assign um, attributes to configure the loader and restart it. So maybe I'll have a folder named loader and I'll create a group called org loader org group. And I'll assign grouper loader to it and then I'll edit the attributes and the db, db name again from the grouper-loader.properties is my source um, the cron is going to be every minute um, normally you'll have the cron be once a day but for this example it's every minute just so we can see it work um, and then the query is select group name, subject ID, subject source ID from loader courses v. Um, it's a cron schedule. Uh, the grouper type is a group list, not a simple. And each one of these has a tooltip that will explain um, what you're doing. And that should do it. So now we need to restart the loader process to pick up this new um, configuration. And then we'll wait till the top of the minute. Note that in the UI right now, there's no folder called orgs in here. So now the top of the minute went by, and I can refresh the UI and now I see an orgs folder and all of the folders from the uh, query that were returned along with their members. So now let's um, change um, the uh, database records. Let's delete one of them and we'll see that propagate through. So if I go to the table, in this case it's backed by a table, it might be a, a view against um, you know, your course management system or whatever. So if I remove this uh, computer science one, it's not going to affect the loader because the loader doesn't realize 
that it managed that group. So um, again, we'll wait till the top of the minute. And that group and member is still there. So what we can do is, this is an advanced feature, is go to the configuration and there's a groups like string where you can specify in a SQL like um, string which groups are managed by this loader job. So in this case everything under the orgs folder is managed by this loader job. So now I can um, uh, I think we need to bounce the loader for that change and wait till the top of the minute and now it will make sure that everything that's covered in this SQL like string is managed by the loader so if there are orphans in grouper that aren't returned from the loader query they'll be deleted and in this case the folders are still there um, but the uh, the group is not and another thing about the loader is um, everything is audited so you can get a history point in time history of the memberships in the group and you can also just look at the audit log which will show you um, when people were added or removed from a group and you can see these happen at the at the top of the minute obviously because that's when the cron is running uh, this one happened from the grouper UI as I was removing that group just to uh, show you that it would be put back in. That's it for the grouper admin loader part one. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Thank you very much. Click on um, the wiki or um, various links for more information.